I like to use screencasts as teaching tools and uh, given that this is a new class I haven't known exactly where the uh, sticking points would be and I wasn't sure what to try to do and I've been trying to come up with an idea and after reading the journal and, or the uh, reflections today I decided that I would do well just to make a very simple screencast to point out a couple of things and it, it may be that everybody is familiar with these already but I just want to cover them in case anybody isn't. So the first one is using the command line interface with Python. And if you're using Linux, all you have to do is pipe, type Python like that. Um, if you're using Windows, it's a little different. And I didn't bring that up here. So let me just really quickly bring up a, a virtual machine here. And there's Windows, and hopefully it'll start up in a timely fashion. Being Windows, it sometimes decides it has to uh, do updates and things. All right, we'll let it uh, fiddle around for a minute and see what it's going to do. So, with the command line interface... <laughs> Like I said, sometimes it just has to do strange things. I don't know what it's doing. Go away. Leave me alone. Okay. Um, there. Now it's hidden at least. Um, with command line interface, you can type any Python command you want, and it'll just give you the answer to that. And so, you know, if I want to set a variable to something, it doesn't print anything, but if I print A, I can see it has the value of 3. If I say B equals 3, again, it doesn't print anything, um, but it does give the value if I just type B. Um, one of the interesting things that, uh, that Python will do is it will tell you if two things are the same object. And you do that by saying A is B. And in this case, it says true. So it means they're both pointing to the same memory location that has the value 3 in it. Um, this is more interesting when we do things like dictionaries, okay? So, and I tend to use camel case. I, I've noticed a lot of people using underscores to separate names. And I don't know if that's taught in CSE 110 or, or if that's part of real Python. I tend to use damel, camel case. And so in this case, um, if we just create an empty dictionary, it tells us it's that. We can say type of my dict, and it says it's an object of class dictionary. And incidentally, if we say type of a, it's an object of class int. I don't know if you knew that numbers were objects, but in Python they are. Um, and so, with a dictionary, we can set locations in the dictionary to a value. So, for example, if I say my dict sub 4 equals, I don't know, uh, word. Why did I get that carried away on my quotes there? And so now if I ask for what my dict is, it has one entry in it. It has the key for with the value word. Now the interesting thing about dictionaries is that keys, that's what's on the left-hand side here, and values can be any Python object. And so we can say my dict sub word equals one, two, three. And unless I've messed up, that's a list. Or is it a tuple? Let's see. So if we ask for my dict, it now shows us that it has two entries in it. The key four has the value word. The key word has the value one, two, three. And if we do type of my dict sub word, That's a list. Okay, I did get a list. And as I've commented elsewhere, and I'm not shy to admit, I am learning Python along with you. 
And so it's quite possible for me to mess up tuples and lists because I'm still learning things. Um, now we might notice, uh, I don't know if there's a keys method. Huh, there is, okay. So if I ask for the keys, it returns a list of, well, it doesn't return a list. It returns an object of type disk, disk, dict keys. That's easy for me to say. And so we can find out, yep, that's an object of type of dict keys. Or if we say my dict sub one is not subscriptable. Okay, that's interesting to know. And so I wonder, we can certainly do a for key in my dict dot keys. I would imagine that works anyway. Oh, it would help if I used a colon instead of a semicolon. Now we can say print key and if I enter, okay, so it does that. So now I can say print type key, for example. Oh, pfft. I forgot that it's not like the shell. I have to go back to the start. There we go. Um, what I was hoping to show you, and I don't see an easy way of doing it, is that this word and this word are two entirely different things. And I don't know if that matters, but it's just one of those weird things about how computer languages work, and Python in particular. And so, all right. So the point is, I have two different keys. I have a key named for and a key named word. For points to the value word. Word points to this list one, two, three. Now I can also put another dictionary into a dictionary. So if I say my dict sub, what's a good key to use? Uh, 56 equals, and we can create a dictionary on the fly by doing that. And now if we ask for my dict, we see that it has three entries in it. Key of four, key of word, key of 56. 56 contains a dictionary with the key of A and the key of B. And uh, so this can be useful in seeing how objects behave in Python, there were a lot of questions about formatting things. Um, and for example, if I wanted to print out the keys and the values in a formatted list, one way I might do that would be for, uh, let's see, let's try for entry in my dict print entry. Interesting, so it printed the key, not the actual entry. So four on a dictionary actually loops over the keys and it would make more sense to call that variable key. And so now I could do print my dict sub key. And now we can see it printed out word, which is the value for four, one, two, three, which is the value for word, and a1, b2, which is the value for 56. We could also do a formatted output, print, and this is the strange F that some people wondered about. So F followed by a double quote, or probably a single quote as well, 
creates what's called a format string. And a format string is just like any other string. Um, so for example, if I just do that, is that what you expected? The string is just my dict sub key, which looks like an index into the uh, dictionary, but it's just the string that looks like that. However, if inside of that we put um, key, and then we can say key, and so with the curlies, that means that's actually a reference to the variable named key, which is my loop variable here. Key key has value, and then we put another curly there. Oops, I can't use my mouse. Okay, there we go. And so that says it's now going to make a reference to the value of my dictionary accessed by key. And so if I print that out, now we can see, so the F colon made it print like this. Key came out literally, but then open curly key close curly gave me the value, which is four for the first one, has value, and it looks up my dict sub key, which is somewhere there we know is the word. Key word has the value of the list one, two, three. Key 56 has the value A colon one, B colon two. And so, what am I hoping to show you here? A little bit about how dictionaries work. I don't know if that makes them any more intelligible. I can hope it does. Show you a little bit about formatted output. That's what the F quote is, is so that anything that has these curlies around it will be interpreted as a reference to Python code, not just a variable. Um, and and that allows you to make your output a little, little nicer. There, there are other things you can do with the formatting, um, and I didn't look those up beforehand, and I don't remember them off the top of my head, but you can actually specify widths for things and how they're justified in the field and so forth. So F quote has a lot of capabilities to it. Now notice if I say F quote That just gives me the string my dict. But if I say f quote curly my dict, that gives me a string that has the print representation of my dict in it. Why is that useful? Well, in this case, it probably isn't. But if I wanted a variable that I could process to look like my dict, I can say. Uh, my string equals f quote, and let's just check that. It should be able to use a single quote too. And now, if we look at my string, it has that string in it. Okay. And then the other thing, of course, is I can just type Python code at the command line and it gives me the results of executing that code. Now let's see if Windows has come back. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just gonna make life really difficult for me. Um, I've already gone through all this before. Well, this is not going to be a timely thing for me, is it? All right, we'll uh, ignore that then for the moment. Um, with the hope that what I've illustrated here works out. Now, the one thing, the reason why I had this uh, PowerPoint up here, well, LibreOffice and Press, I'm running Linux, I don't have uh, Office. Uh, I wanted to do a little indication of how these things look if you try to picture them inside the computer. Um, this may or may not help explain things, but we'll give it a try, okay? So I've got a variable, and we'll, we'll represent a variable by a circle there, and it's called my dict. And this variable points to a dictionary 
which we're going to let be a structure, okay? And actually, let's see what this gives us. Gives us a table. And so I've got the key four in my dict, which is associated with the value word. I've got the key word in my dictionary, which is associated with the value one, two, three. And I've got the key 56, which is associated with, let's see, is this going to let us, uh, there were just two elements in there, weren't there? Oops, it didn't embed it, but I can try and embed it here. Oh, come on. I want to move you. Okay. And let's see, it's got the key A, which is associated with the value 1, and it's got the key B, which is associated with the value 2. And so my dict, um, yeah, maybe I connect right there, okay, points to this dictionary. And I forgot to connect this to it. But this goes inside of that dictionary. Okay? And so that's kind of a graphical idea of how my dict, which is a variable, is related to the dictionary, which has this information in it. Um, if I create another variable, and for want of continuity, we'll call it dict2 like that, what I've just done is I've just created a, a variable called dict2 and I have made it point to the same structure, okay? And so I can ask my dict is dict2 and it'll say true. And so if I print out dict2, I can see it's got the same contents there. If I say dict2 sub, um, and I mean, if you really want to get obnoxious, you can make your keys be lists. Whoops. No, the list cannot be a key. That'll learn me, won't it? Well, all right. Sorry, in other languages, lists are hashable. Okay, um, so we'll call it... Uh, so now if I print out dict2, we can see it now has the key tear, which has the value terrible in it. And so... What that ends up being is, okay, so I've now got the key tear, which has the value terrible in it. But you'll notice now if I ask my dict, it has the same thing in it. So changing dict to change dict my dict because they're both pointing to the exact same object. All right. Um, now, there are lots more uh, things that you can do with dictionaries than what we've learned so far. Somebody asked, what's the use of having a dictionary as opposed to just having a list? Because I could certainly have a list with these values in it, um, or I could have a list of lists. Let's see. So my list equals, and we're going to say four word word list one two three um, list 56 dictionary a one b two and you'll notice when I am uh, typing here at the command line interpreter, I'm not really consistent with my spacing. 
So now my list, well, I didn't capitalize it correctly. Um, oh, I didn't get down to terror terrible, but that looks a lot like the dictionary, doesn't it? With the exception of terror terrible, which I left off. But if I want to find the value associated with four, in my dict, I just say my dict sub four, and it prints that out for me. If I want to find it in the list, I have to say four elem in my list if elem sub zero equals four print uh, for my parens elem sub one break and I got word out. Um, so I have to actually go through the list until I find the one I'm interested in. Whereas with the dictionary, I can just ask for the key I'm interested in. And so that's the advantage of a dict, is it's easy to look things up in it. Um, a list may be somewhat more flexible, and it all depends on what you want to do. There, there is no best here until you define what the application is, and then you know what's best. Okay, a lot of talking. I hope some of it was useful. Sorry about not being able to get Windows working. Um, in Windows, I'm trying to remember what you have to click on to get to the command line. I know there's something called IDL, or IDLE, I-D-L-E, which seems to bring up a command line. I don't know if it does more than that. I haven't played with it enough to know. But this is certainly one of the advantages of Python, is you can just type commands at, at the command line here and see the results of them. So, like I say, hopefully that's useful. Um, if this brings up any questions, feel free to uh, connect them to, or to post them as replies to this announcement.